we can get over, how we can get on, how we can be able to develop in the areas that he wants us to. For me, I mentioned about love. And when I first read it, love is patient, love is kind, it's not haughty, it's not selfish, it's not rude, it doesn't demand its own way, it's not counting record and keeping records of wrong. I said, God, that's why you are God alone. This is impossible. I can't do that. I have too much history, too much past, too many, th too many people I still plan to get back over on. Too many people I want to avenge. I want to I want to avenge myself. My bishop used to always say, if you go your own way, you got to pay your own fare and all of the all of the consequences that goes with it. But when we get into the kingdom for real, it's like we have to trust God. The Bible says that he never when Jesus suffered, he never answered back. He never threatened to get even. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. That's a challenge for us. But as we develop in the fruit of the spirit of God, when that love matter comes up, when we have the opportunity to go off, when we have the opportunity to be offended, when we have the opportunity not to forgive, now our prayers are hindered. Our developments are hindered. We the same mom that we said we wasn't going to be the way that our mom yelled and screamed at us. We the same carnal person, even though we said this is what we're not going to do. All of our vows and, and New Year's resolutions that we make, we find ourselves still doing that in any area, fill in the blank for you. And commit that my whole members, Romans 12, 1 and 2, my whole, the whole of myself in every area of the house. He don't just get the living room and the kitchen. He gets all of the house, everything that's in the attic, everything that's in the floor. I'm open and naked in the eyes of him with whom I have to do because I want to be for real about it all. Because the Bible also says that God is Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. And that's what we want. We want to commit to God and say, be Lord over my life so that everything that I do is a reflection of you. And so women of God, as we commit to that, as we commit to our overall development, God will show us things, even in the wilderness we can learn. And many of us are in a wilderness season, not just because of money, some for sickness, some for COVID, so for, for the things that they're trying to develop and grow in, in their, on, their um, on the side of what they're doing so they can be released from the job. But whatever it is, whatever challenges we face, we can't separate from God in the midst of it. That's what the enemy wants. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy every area of faith that you have, every area of worship that you have, every area that you want to believe God in. So you have to, instead of drawing back, you have to press forward and recall your testimony. Maintain a heart of gratitude. Maintain the fruit of the spirit. Commit to developing the fruit of the spirit so that you can respond and not react to the cares of this world. We are different as we are transformed. Amen. We stay in that place. We stay in the pocket until we get to the place that all that's coming out of us is him. As I mentioned, for me, because of the issues in the past and the things that I had, I when I read the love chapter, I was convinced I can't do that. My heart has been broken. There's too many issues in my heart. There's too many things in my heart. I can't do it. And in my quiet place with the Lord, God showed me me this time. It was my heart. He said, take your heart out and give it to me. And I said, what? We can follow up in the group chat. A dream is while you're asleep. A vision is while you're awake, when you're literally seeing and experiencing and communing with God, like live. He said, take out your heart and give it to me. And I said, what? And he said, take your heart out of your chest and give it to me. And so I did. I, 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 I took my heart out of my chest and I could see it. It was in my hands. And it was shriveled up. You know, you can Google a heart. It's supposed to be pumping. It's supposed to be full. Mine was shriveled up more like a prune with sticks and rocks and things in it. It was holes. It was damaged. It was destroyed. It was useless. He said, now give it to me. And I lifted up my heart in my hands. And then it was like a, like a, like a shing, like a light, like a, like a bright shing on it. And when I raised my hands down, I had a brand new, full, beating, healthy, beautiful heart. And then God told me to put it back. And when I put it back in my chest, I could feel a heat all over me. And God said, now guard your heart 
with all diligence. And now if you know you had a natural heart transplant, you can't do the things that you always did. You're going to have to, you're going to have to protect it. You're going to have to make sure that the heart can acclimate to the body and doesn't reject it. You're going to have to eat different. You're going to have to move different. You're going to have to do different to protect the heart. And so now that yes. is facing me through how to keep this fresh heart from becoming the old heart that I had. I hope that I'm helping somebody. Sometimes we need, when God, when God said, I'll put a new heart in you, I'll, I'll renew a right spirit in you. For me, it had to happen literally. Amen. And then I'm like, now I can't allow the same things in my heart. Now I can't have the same diet. Now I can't go the same way. And that's the commitment we have to make when we want to be that vessel of gold. We want to be that vessel of honor. We want to be who God formed and fashioned and desired us to be before we got here. It takes work. You have to work the soil. You have to toil the ground. You have to rid yourself of the offensive. My bishop used to always say, you face it. Be for real about it, whatever it is. Anxiety you know, low self-esteem, whatever it is, you face it, then you trace it. Where did I get that from? Why is that? And the Holy Spirit will let you help you to do it. But then you erase it. You rid yourself of it. You say no more. And then God will help you replace it with the word of God, with the passions of God, with the patterns of God. And there's accountability partners and people that can help you do it. And he'll do it too. The Holy Spirit will help you because you don't turn away. You don't move from the broccoli part of the buffet because that's like, Ugh. and go back over to the chicken like you ain't hear it. You stay there and you commune with him and you feed off of him and you follow his instructions so that you can apprehend those things that God wants to manifest in your life. And it always starts with you and it stays with you. And there is no graduation. That's how everyone that's esteemed and high in ministry, how are the mighty fallen when they fail to stay with the Holy with the Holy Spirit and be in a constant state of repentance, of development, of change, of processing, of humility, humbling ourselves before God, staying at that altar gracefully broken like Pastor Carol played before we started. I'm going to stop. I'm going to get in the group chat and pray. I shared from um, the power of a praying woman and still highly recommend those of you that don't have it to use it as a springboard. And so for a practical exercise, I'm going to demonstrate it for you. There's 30 different titles. There's two uh, prayer points that I'm pulling from today. One is number seven. God rule every area of my life. And the other one is number 12 that says, plant me so that I will bear the fruit of your spirit. So the practical exercise is, as I said, when you start with what's on the pages and then you flow with the Holy Spirit and continue to pray as the Lord leads you, because we believe that in, well, not we believe, the word says, God gives voice to his word when we speak it. And then the angels of God move out on assignment to bring those words to pass, right? By the word of God, the whole earth was framed and we are speaking spirits as well. And as we speak the word of God, things happen in the natural to manifest his word so that it doesn't return to him void. And so you're gonna, I'm gonna um, get ready to pray. Um, use these as an example so that you guys understand what I mean by this being a tool or remind you, if you already know, um, this prayer being a tool, because many times from these, I've gone off of the book and written my own prayers. I've written dozens of prayers. God has me going back now and typing them up and maybe it'll end up being a prayer book or something for, if no one else, for me, <laughs> right? Because everything in ministry starts with it being for you. Father, we thank you now that you are the God of heaven. We thank you now for your word that says where two or three are gathered in your name, that you are in the midst of us. We thank you now that all over the world in every time zone, we focus on you. We pay attention to what you are saying. We pay attention and we maximize every encounter with you. And so Father, now in prayer, I ask for us to all have an encounter with you, that you would speak through me, God, 
that you would manifest your signs, your wonders, and your miracles by allowing me to be able to hear in the spirit realm what the petitions are of your beloved women on this day, including my sister that's trying to send a prayer request to me. I pray now, God, that you would move by your spirit and use me as a vessel of gold, a vessel of honor, meet for your use, that women would be strengthened, edified, nourished, encouraged, exhorted, and that this word that comes forth even through prayer would get down, would go deep, would bypass the thorns, that would make it to their soil, bring forth fruit some 30, 60, and 100 fold in the name that's above every name. Father, I thank you now that as we bow before you this day, we declare that you are Lord over every area of our lives. We surrender ourselves and our lives to you. And we invite you to rule every part of our minds, our souls, our body, and our spirits. We love you, God, with all of our hearts, with our whole soul, with our whole minds. We commit to trusting you in every area of our being. We declare that you are Lord over every area of our life today and every day. Enable us, God, to deny ourselves in order to take up our cross daily and follow you. We want to be your disciples, just as you have said in your word. Help us to do what it takes. We want to lose our lives so that you can save it. Teach us what that means. Speak to us so that we may understand. Help us to understand and say yes to you immediately whenever you give us direction for our lives. May our desire be to please you and hold nothing back. We surrender our relationships, our finances, our work, our recreation, our decisions, our time, our body, our mind, our souls, our spirits, our desires, and our dreams. We put them all in your hands now. This day in the name of Jesus, we want to be used for your glory. We declare this day, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it's not I that lives. It's you in me, God. Live in us, live through us, that what we do now is not be in in the flesh, but it'll be by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Rule every area of our lives, God, and lead us into all that you have for us, God. We pray now in the name of Jesus that you would be magnified, that you would be glorified, that you would be able to be seen. Search our hearts, oh God. Try us and see if there's any wickedness in us. Give us a heart transplant if necessary, God. Replace all that's wrong in my character with the goodness that's in yours. Plant the fruit of your spirit in me and cause me to flourish. Help me to abide in you, Lord Jesus, so that I will bear fruit in my life. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to fill me afresh and anew with your love today so that it'll flow out of me and into the lives of others. You said in your word, let the peace of Christ rule your hearts. And so I pray now that your peace would rule my heart and my mind to such a degree that when people would sense and see it around, see around me, what it is, is you. Help me to be able to pursue you and pursue the things that make for peace, the things that make me to be edifying to others that come in contact with me. Give me the joy of knowing you more and what knowing you produces. Make me patient with others so that I reflect mm-hmm. your character to them. Help me to be kind whenever there's an opportunity for it. May your goodness flow through me so that I'll do good to everyone. Make yes. me faithful to follow you, to trust you in all things. Help me to have meekness and gentleness in Christ so that I reflect your gentle spirit. Enable me to be self-controlled in my thoughts, in my mind, in my words, in my habits, where I need to be pruned in order to bear more fruit. God, I submit myself to you. I know that without you, I can do nothing. You are the vine and I am the branches. I must abide in you in order to bear fruit. Help me to do that, God. Thank you in advance for your promise that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that I can ask or think or even imagine according to the power that's at work in me. Abide in me, God, that whatever I ask and desire would be from you and be according to your will for my life. I thank you, God, for your promise that says that if I ask, I will receive. May I be like a tree planted by the rivers of water so that I would bring forth fruit in season and would not wither. I pray in Jesus name that the fruit of your spirit would grow in me and be recognized clearly by everyone that comes in contact to me. God, we pour out our lives before you. We surrender all. We want the members of our limbs to bear fruit from 
you. We pray now, God, for every person under the sound of my voice and those that would listen, that you would make us to be easily entreated to your word, that we wouldn't draw back from the issues and the cares of this world, but we would draw closer to you, intimately with you. Help us to learn how to continue to commune with you and not let anything separate us from being in your presence, not let anything separate us from having time with you. Show us the pockets and the places where we can commune with you, whether it's during our lunch hour, whether it's on the drive, whether it's pulling over on the side of the road for five minutes, 10 minutes. God, we ask you, give us a way of escape when we want to flesh out. Help us to be able to manifest the fruit of your spirit at Mm -hmm. all times. Mm -hmm. Make the text message come at the right time to encourage us when our minds are oppressed and depressed. Have somebody give us a phone call when we're about to step out the house and do the wrong thing. Lay guard over our mouths when we're about to say the wrong thing. God, we thank you that the Holy Spirit is the comforter, the teacher, the guide, the way maker in the name of Jesus. Make ways for us out of no way. Light up the path and make it straight for us so that we can walk without stumbling and tread upon serpents and scorpions and anything that will by any means try to harm us, distract us, frustrate us, or deny us. God, we pray now for the abundance of your blessings, that you would retain the time, that you would restore what the canker worm has stolen, that no matter what our age is or where we are in ministry, in finances, in your plan, God, you can restore the time. You in one moment can touch us and everything can change. You can make 50 years evaporate of not being progressive and we'd be progressing and do more in this year than we've ever done. And so Father, we ask you for your favor. We ask you for your supernatural. We ask you for your help, God. You are our help and we call on you. And your word says that no one that puts their trust in God is ever disappointed. And so we trust in you with all of our hearts. We lean not to our understanding, but in all of our ways, God, even the ways that aren't pleasing to you, God, we acknowledge you and we ask you, please, God, direct our path. Direct our path, God. Speak to us in the morning. Speak to us in the noonday. Give us dreams. Give us visions. Give us instruction. Give us accountability partners and pastors and ministers we can trust our whole lives to so that they can confirm what you're saying, so that they can help us to stay on the path, so that you can keep us in the way that leads to the wealthy places that you've ordained from us before time begin. We pray for every family. We pray for every single. We pray for every pastor, evangelist, minister, and teacher. We pray, God, for the cares of this world, that we can cast the whole of them upon you. You care for us. You care for our children. You care for the birth of babies. You care about those that are in the hospital. You care about the effects of COVID. You care about our promotions. You care about us losing our jobs. You care about the frustrations that's happening in our marriages. God, we know that you care for us. Yes, Jesus. And so, Father, as we lay every petition at your altar, even the woman that's in between uh, decisions on giving up her job and coming home to care for her family and believing you for provision right now in Jesus name, God, we say, speak that confirming word to her and allow her to know that you will not fail her, that Mm -hmm. it is you, that you are leading and that our first ministry being our family, our spouses and our children is more important than anything that we can gain. The Bible says, what would it profit a woman to gain the whole world? and lose your soul, to gain the whole world, and your daughter commit the act that would separate her permanently from God and you. Go forward, woman of God. Go forward and go home and take care of your family, and God will provide. God, we thank you now that in every area of our lives, you are the potter, and we are the clay. You are the vine and we are the branches. You are in charge. You are in control. You lead, you drive, you're the head. Help us to submit to you more and wait on you and trust you and allow you to show us your glory. Father, we recall every testimony you've always come through. In everything that even we have had taken from us, you show us the purpose in it, God, so that we can understand it and it be another building block in the testimony of what you're building in and through us. God, we thank you now that every woman is encouraged and exhorted that with you, nothing is impossible. If Mm -hmm. we can only believe and not allow our faith to fail, 
you said that we will reap. And so we thank you for a season of reaping. We thank you for a season of divine connections. We thank you for a season of open doors. We thank you that the value that you have in us and what we've been working on in private that you're going to bring forth publicly. We're not going to be an overnight success. It's going to happen overnight, but it's going to be after all of the times that you've been with us in our private places, with our private places, in our private struggles, in our private tears. You're going to turn our mourning into dancing. You're going to turn our sorrow into joy. You're going to turn our frustrations into faith filled manifestation yes so father we thank you that we're not disappointed that we're not hurtful about all that we gave to all the people that we've helped all of the times we put everyone else first and not ourselves we're not angry about that anymore we're at peace with that because our expectation is from you Mm -hmm. and you said that you will have a great recompense of reward for us in this life and hereafter And so, Father, we look for our reward to come from you, not the arm of flesh and not man one more day. And as we trust in you and lean on you, we thank you for pouring out blessings for us that there's not room enough to fill. That as soon as we stopped looking to man and we started looking to you, Master, you provided for us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over that our barns are full, our storehouses are full. Every area of lack has been restored because our hope and our confidence and our faith returned to you. This is our prayer. And this is the confidence that we have in you, that your word says that as we know that you not only hear us, we can believe, we trust now that you will answer us according to your word. And so even for those that are in the midst of fast, whether it's 21 days, five days, however many days, three days just with you, God, we know that you're going to ensure that the delivering message is going to come, that all of the frustrations, that all of the demonic in the heavenlies, that nothing will be able to stop your message from getting to us, taking root in us, coming down, going up and bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. This is our faith, our prayer, and our confidence that our testimonies are coming. Not for us to glorify ourselves, but for us to say, our God is faithful. We thank you now, God, for being that faithful God in our lives. In every area that we need you, we trust you and know you're going to come through. And so we submit the whole of our cares upon you and even our dreams, and even our visions, and even our entire destiny, that you're going to ensure that the right voices, the right places, the right connections are going to come our way. You're going to illuminate of all the books in our house, which one you want us to focus on, of all the scripture and the word of God, which ones you need us to apply, of all the prayers to pray, what is needful for us at this time, that this year would truly be a new year for us. This is our prayer and our confidence that we have in you in the name that's above every name in the matchless, powerful, awesome, magnificent name of Jesus, we pray and say, amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to your name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I jotted down a few things that she said. I just want to run over a few of the things that she said tonight, this morning. He wants to still kill and destroy every area of our lives in order for us to overcome and live victorious. We need to respond and not react to the cares of this world and really take on the fruit of the spirit. You know, many times I I put this in and many times we say to people, I want to give you a piece of my mind. And that's exactly what we do. We lose parts of our mind, but we must take on the mind of Christ, which will make our minds whole. So he wants us again, as you were saying, he wants us to take our hearts and give it to him. Amen. And he wants us to take our hearts so he can renew in us a new heart as we walk daily in the fruit of the spirit. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. Good morning. When um, you shared um, your encounter with God, it's those encounters 
that really root us in our walk. It's those encounters when those things come to shake us that we're able to go back and stay rooted and grounded in him. And so that was a powerful testimony. Thank you for sharing. And it's a blessing to be here. Amen. I'm driving it. It's so much that I, I've heard and I, I want to jot down. Is there like, I just want to know if it's a playback or a recording where I can go back to this and re-listen to it. Yes. Yes, it will be. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless you all. Love you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless you.